Hey guys, um, this is going to be a review on the Celestron First Scope. This is a uh, this is a great little telescope. I've seen a lot with it. I've seen the uh, the Pleiades, the Orion Nebula. I've seen Saturn's rings. I've seen Jupiter's stripes. And I've seen the Moon. All those I was able to see with these telescopes. And uh, I haven't seen the Andromeda Galaxy yet, but I really do want to. But this is just going to be a little review on the Celestron First Scope. I've had a, uh, I've had this telescope for almost a year now. I've got it back in. I purchased it back in October of 2016, and it's September 2017, so it's al almost a year. But yeah, let's get on to the review. As you can see, you see the primary mirror down there. It is a 76 millimeter mirror, um, which is just which is just about three inches. You can see there's a smaller secondary mirror up here. It's a, little, it's a bit blurry. It's not focused. You see a smaller secondary mirror. You see it's um just like any other reflector telescope. It just uses a primary mirror down there and a flat secondary mirror that bounces the light up into the focuser. And yeah, these three collimation screws, and unlike a normal reflector, this ain't on a full spider. It's just on a little piece of metal right here. It's a little stock. And yeah, those are the optics. You can see the the OTA or the optical tube assembly. You can see it has a wrap around it that that has all the names of most of the most famous astronomers and scientists. You can see, like, Galileo, uh, Hans Lippershey, and Christ Christian Huygens. It's a, it's a very nice wrap. It really gives the telescope a nice look. And yeah, and you can see there is these two screws right here, these two nuts. These actually hold on to a finder scope. These are just simple little nuts right here. I'm gonna screw it back on. Okay, hold on. There we go. Put it back on. You can see there is a little mark right here where I had a finder scope, but it was a crappy 5x24 finder scope and it didn't really work well. But yeah, those that's the optical tube assembly. You can see the specifications right here. It's not focusing. Come on, focus. Focus a little bit. Come on. Ah, it's not focusing. So you can see first scope telescope, 76 millimeters, model 21024. 76 millimeters means the uh, the aperture of the uh, the mirror. And coated optic means they are means they are coated with anti-reflection coating, which is very good. Yeah, you can see, unlike, and also, there's a little thing right here. Unlike a, unlike the more um, larger aperture reflector telescopes, you can see that this doesn't have collimation screws. Is uh, The mirror is completely uncollimatable, but the secondary mirror is. So you can only collimate the secondary mirror, not the primary mirror, which I find is pretty weird. But yeah, those are the specifications. And now, you can see the focuser right here. You can see it's just, it's not a Crayford focuser like my other telescope. It is something called a rack and pinion focuser. It's because it uses a metal rack right here that moves it in and out like that or up and down. And it's not a two inch, it just holds the standard inch and a quarter eyepieces. So if you have a 2 inch eyepiece, you won't be able to fit it into here. And yeah, now you see that there's there is two set screws right here that hold onto the eyepiece. And speaking of the eyepiece, you can see it is a H 20 millimeter. The H means hy um, hygiens. And to be honest, these eyepieces, they are not that good. They are... Uh, 
they are just uh, cheap eyepieces. The reason why they package cheap eyepieces with this telescope is just to keep the price down so it's more affordable. But yeah, these eyepieces, they don't give off good views. They have a very small field of view and they have a lot of aberrations. So I would recommend changing the eyepiece on here to, a, so, so, to something better, like, have it in my pocket right here, like a Plossel. Plossels are much better. You can see even the, the size comparison. You can see the opening right here is a lot bigger, a lot bigger than this eyepiece. And this eyepiece right here, um, well, I actually got a little kit that that, that I bought off Amazon. It's uh, about sixty bucks, and it came with three eyepieces: a, tw a twenty millimeter, a twelve point five millimeter, and a six millimeter. And these are much better eyepieces. They have a much wider field of view. You can see how wide the field of view is, unlike this one. So small. Yeah, I melt. I melted the eyepiece from doing solar projection with a refractor telescope. These have much wider field of view, and they are, and they have a much, and they uh, and they don't have a lot of aberration, which is really good. So I'm gonna put that in there right now. Yeah, those that, that's the focuser and the eyepieces. I also forgot to mention this eyepiece. This is a. This is a four millimeter Ramsden eyepiece. Now this eyepiece right here, this one is um, this this little eyepiece right here. See, has a Celestron logo on it. This one did not come packaged with this telescope. This one actually um, this actually came with a Celestron Power Seeker, but I lost the one for the, I lost the four millimeter for this one, which is why I'm using this one. You can see, still has a very, very uh, small field of view. And yeah, there's a little on the side right there. Oh, and you can also see the, the dust cap right here. A little part snapped off, but that's fine. Just come on. There we go. This pops on the front, so no dust would get on the the optics. And yeah. You can see the base right here. It is a Dobsonian base, so it so it only moves up and down, and side to side or altitude and azimuth. So it's really easy to navigate stuff in the night sky. You just you just point at the object that you want to look at. There's no objects in the sky right now. It's cloudy. It's also daytime. Just point at the object you want to see, and it'll be in the field of view. But I would recommend getting a a finder scope for this. Or do you know what? Nah, you don't need a finder scope. There was this one video that I saw where the guy said you don't need a finder scope. This whole thing is basically a giant finder scope because it's such low power. And yeah. You can see it just moves side to side and up and down. And there's a little knob right here to adjust the tension. So you can so you can keep it still. Or you can move it like this. And and unlike my other telescope, it has it runs on Teflon pads, so it just moves around very smoothly. You can see it has a nice Celestron logo on it. And yeah, that is my review on the Celestron first scope. It is a great little telescope. I would I would totally recommend it for for beginners who want a, a nice telescope, but also also want to be cheap. Like they don't want to spend too much money. So yeah, this is my little review on the Celestron first scope. See ya.